The Wally Show podcast is our daily radio show heard live through the Way FM app each morning and hosted by Wally, Gavin, and me, Betty Rock. For more fun, be sure to connect with us at wayfm.com slash Wally. The Wally Show podcast is brought to you by Colorado Christian University Online, where Wally teaches and where you can earn a degree online just like Betty Rock. You can learn more at ccu.edu slash Wally. This podcast is also brought to you by United Faith Mortgage. Let their direct lender advise Advantage, save you time and money. Uplifting Way FM. Stories served with a side of Southern sass. You're breaking my hair. I mean, charm. Here's Betty Rock. Wally, I have some great news for you. Oh, great news. Your unique weight loss plan that you call the <laughs> I Didn't Diet is trending. Thank you. I've been trying to get this going for you're so long. You're a trendsetter, long. but you're never going to get the credit for it. See, that's a problem. Like, I mean, I've been talking about this for years. It's, I mean, it's a very simple concept. Here's what you did wrong, okay? All the credit is going to a Nashville grandfather who lost 58 pounds from eating McDonald's for 100 days. What? And he documented the whole thing with videos on social media. Uh, That's where you went wrong. Yeah. So your ID, I didn't plan, ID, I didn't Ooh. diet, Ooh. is pretty much you get whatever you want, you yeah. eat whatever you want, you just don't eat it all. Yeah. And that's exactly what this grandfather did by losing 58 pounds. Because you think about it, like say you go out to uh, Chewy's and you get their delicious burrito meal and you have a whole burrito, okay? And so you go, you know what? I'm going to eat half of this burrito. Then you have an option. You could throw the other half away, which isn't the best thing, or you could save that other half for dinner. So you, in essence, have had one meal instead of two. uh, And you still get what you want. Exactly. You don't have to eat that nasty diet food. You could get a pizza and you could eat half your pizza. It's the I didn't diet. I could have eaten it all right. but i just didn't you know <laughs> and it, didn't. it makes so much sense well another tip that he used while he was doing this mcdonald's diet was he only drank water Ooh. he never did soda which you could do by adding your yeah. grape powder yeah to but you don't water. leave mcdonald's without your coke no ice there's not many other reasons for me to go to mcdonald's <laughs> but i could drink half of it Oh, and I would be on go. the plan, see? Okay. And then just pour the other half out. You well, know? it was th- this diet was working so well for him that on day 40 of his 100-day diet, his wife actually decided to try it too. And as of day 65, she's lost 18 pounds. Good for her. Like I'm telling you, like it, it, it's. I mean, it's in essence, it's portion control. Uh, right. it's just I just have a clever name for it. <laughs> the I didn't diet. What's he calling his? Diet. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have a name marketing. For it. You have no marketing there, <laughs> sir, but you do have uh, following on social media, so good for you. Way to steal my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. We're gonna do a little hashtag your weekend, where you give us a creative hashtag. Don't make it very obvious, because we like to guess what happened on your weekend. Uh, Lady Rock, why don't you give us an example? Gosh, I have so many, but I think I'm gonna go with this one because it's just gonna make you laugh. Okay. Hashtag wasn't worth it. Ah. Uh, oh. Hashtag wasn't worth it. Mm. Ooh, now, was this from the weekend that I did not spend with you? Because uh, I was with you on Friday, <laughs> and because, I mean, I'm thinking it might be me. Uh, <laughs> so was this from a Saturday or Sunday? It was from a Saturday. A Saturday. Okay, so you got back Saturday. I was still traveling. Uh, I'm going to say hashtag wasn't worth it. You went to, you'd been dreaming of crystals. Because uh, uh-huh. you oh, love yourself some crystals. crystals. Oh, yeah. the restaurant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd been dreaming of that the all sliders. week long and had Ooh. not gotten any, and you finally went, and it wasn't worth it because it made you sick. <laughs> no, but you're close. Really? Oh, okay. it's got to be Chick Fil A. Because I was actually going to go down the food route as well, and I went with you went to a restaurant. Uh-huh. I'm just going to say, what is it? Catfish Camp? Is that the big <gasps> one? So, Do not no, blaspheme no, 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 no. the not, name of Catfish Camp. I'm not camp. blaspheming <laughs> the restaurant. I'm blaspheming. No, not blaspheming. I was going to say. That you had, you know, four pieces of catfish, but then you went back for your, you know, fifth piece, oh, and that turned was sour. Oh, that was that, that one, was that one made, took it, it over the edge, ruined it. No, but on the food vibe, you're okay. right. Okay, so here's what happened. I was at the Orlando airport. I make it to my gate, and I'm like, well, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I want some Chick Fil A, mm-hmm. and I knew that where there was a Chick Fil A oh, yeah. in the airport. So I get out the app and I take the directions that it says to go to the Chick Fil A. Uh, over there in the airport. I go, I get my food. Okay, and then I'm going to make it back to my gate. Mm. Come to find out, oh, no. 
I have to go through security again. <laughs> you left the- I had gone through security, what is made wrong it to with my you? gate, I guess went out to get Chick fil A and had to go through security what again. Is wrong and I had you? to throw away my sweet tea. <laughs> no. How did you I not wanted realize? it so bad. Oh, that's so funny. It was horrible. I sat there fuming for like five <laughs> minutes. Eating just what I could and drinking yeah. what I could. Because you I had like, to get to your plane. Yeah, but I was like, goodness. if I had been able to just go back to my gate, yeah. I would have had all the time in the world. But I didn't know how long right. the TSA was going to take. Right. So it, I just couldn't enjoy if it, and it wasn't worth it. I had just been able to do what I want, despite all the rules for everyone on the planet. Listen, that I'm not I would dangerous, have been happy. but I will be if I don't get my check. What a millennial! That's so funny. All right, so that's Betty Rock's hashtag your weekend. You see how it works? Give us yours now. Eight five five. 33-WAY-FM. That's 855-33-WAY-FM. We'll take your hashtag now. What do you got? Uh, hashtag four less walls. Four less walls. Four okay. less walls. Okay, so you let your husband attempt a uh, home improvement project, and he started with putting one hole in a wall to find <laughs> something, and then uh, ended up having to take that whole wall down, and uh, then that just led to another wall, obviously, and a third and a fourth wall. <laughs> now you have four less walls in your house that you weren't intending on. No. <laughs> I think, Tiffany, that you uh, have been seeing a counselor recently, and he was telling you that you have some emotional walls up. And so you're working through them, and you feel like you've gotten four of them down, so you're getting better. No, but that sounds like I probably need it. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Well, what is four less walls? So yesterday, our church actually did church in the park, not in our church building. So we had four less walls for church. And oh, we did a whole that. community service, then softball game, and it was great. Now, was it warm? Was it cold? Like, I could think that the weather would work against you. It was like 70 degrees overcast and breezy. It was perfect. Oh, that is nice. Did you have people, like, kind of standing there that were already in the park kind of walk up and join you? Yeah, there was a couple people that joined. Um, the whole fire department was there, and we didn't even realize that they go there every Sunday. What are they doing at the park on Sundays? Just hanging out? Just throwing a Frisbee? Yeah, they play ultimate Frisbee every Sunday. Hey, do right. they really? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah, they really do. Sure, a couple houses burned down, but boy, they're getting really good. <laughs> so what do you got? Hashtag pop pop. Hashtag pop pop. Oh, 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 can I go? Okay, go ahead, Rock. Okay, I think no one, and I mean no one, not even the King of England, can resist that bubble wrap. Uh, and you just have to pop it. And I think that you found yourself with some and you went around popping it, probably getting on everyone's nerves, but in reality they're just jealous that they don't have any bubble wrap. Nope. Oh, have you seen those sensory things for people that struggle with that? Oh. That's, in essence, it's like a quiet version of bubble right. wrap. It's yeah. pretty ingenious. Uh, I'm going to say that you became a grandfather, Michael, and your name is Pop Pop. You finally decided on it. You were going to go with Papa, then you were going to go with Big Papa, uh, but you ended up <laughs> with Pop Pop. Pop. Nope, I was at a birthday party with my five-year-old daughter, and there were 25 kids in this big open space with balloons. So every five minutes, you'd hear pop, pop, (laughs) and a magician came, and in the middle of what he was doing, he heard another pop, and then the magician made balloon animals at the end. I'm like, oh, this is going to go great after all the popping we heard all day. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. The, yeah, know the room there, uh, Magic Johnny. You know, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> this is Monday School. It's Wally's take on what he learned at church. Or at least the parts he understood. So we were talking about AI. That's all the buzz. Uh, you know, it's kind of like what people are talking about all the time. And our pastor took time to read a poem, though, about being at the beach. And uh, it mentioned feeling the warm sand on your toes or the picture of an Aurelian sky, which I don't even know what that is still to this day. (laughs) But it's very flowery, very pretty. Uh, Then he revealed that the author of it was written by artificial intelligence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he started uh, by doing prompts with AI to write a poem about summer, then make it shorter, then make it more poetic. And that was what the computer came up with. But ultimately, it was 
just a collection of words to this computer because AI has never felt the warm sand between its microchips. You know, <laughs> it's never stood in the awe of the colors that God has made in the sunset, and it's never felt or experienced anything that it's talking about. True. Yeah, and and then, so then I'm like, oh, I see where you're going. You're gonna line this up with faith, and I love it. I, I think it's a great analogy. You know, because sometimes our faith is like that. It's an artificial faith. We go through the motions. We don't experience God like we did when we first got saved. You know, we've gotten, you know, so far away from what it's like to actually feel and experience God that it becomes words. Hmm. I'm like, oh, I totally get that. Because you're personally in that? Oh, it helped. Yeah. I mean, I go in ebbs and flows for sure. And, mm-hmm. I, and, and it's one of those things. My, my faith will be stronger and better sometimes than other times. And so, like, I'm like, that, that like, totally landed with me. And I think a lot of people find themselves there. I know I do. Yeah. And so uh, the other part of this, though, the converse of this is that our faith is, you know, bigger than that. The world knows about God. Uh, but they've never felt him or experienced him, and that's where we come in, too. Like, that's part of it. it. While it has to be something real in our lives for ourselves, it also has to be real in our lives, but it has to be something that emits from us as well mm-hmm. uh, because our faith should be something that's alive in us and something that we want to share in a way that is anything but artificial. And I think we can easily show that when we have joy in our lives, like yeah. finding joy in the midst of things that most people would be like this is a terrible situation but you walking through it with a smile on your face when you can say that's only because of my relationship with god that i'm able to smile in this situation i think that speaks volumes absolutely way more than it does with you preaching to someone absolutely so there you go a little ai faith and maybe that helps you out if you're stuck today It's easy to let the fear of the unknown keep us from doing something that is good for us. But going back to school might not be quite what you think. Yeah, one of my biggest fears going back to school was I'd have to watch a ton of online lectures, and I kind of have a problem staying awake during stuff like that. But it was so different than I had imagined, and way better. Yeah, for sure. I thought I was going to have to take a bunch of tests, which I am not a fan of. But instead, I was able to write papers, which for me was way better. Plus, you have the flexibility to work in school around your work and life schedule. Another big fear I had is, what if I don't understand something, what do I do? Yeah, CCU, they foster community with your classmates, and they are a great resource. And Colorado Christian University has very responsive online professors who are there to help you so you are never alone as an online student at CCU. Learn more about how you can pursue your passion and find your calling with Colorado Christian University at ccu.edu. Colorado Christian University is a nonprofit impact partner committed to cultivating the mind without compromising the heart. Uplifting Way FM. Here's what's going on today. So there was a crazy story out of D.C. at the Capitol. Capitol Police say that singers from Rushing Brook Children's Choir uh, from Greenville, South Carolina, were at the uh, Capitol and they were doing a musical performance in the uh, rotunda there of the Capitol and they were stopped from singing. They were doing the national anthem and a guard there, a Capitol uh, police stopped them because you're not allowed to do that apparently. You're not allowed to sing, protest, demonstrate uh, and singing is considered a protest even if it is the national anthem uh, without permission. You have to get special permission uh, to do this. And so they stopped them uh, and they said it, it might be found offensive. And you're like, wait a minute. Um, these are kids singing the national anthem. Is it because they're like Christian kids singing the national <laughs> anthem? Like, is that what's offensive? I have no idea, you know. Uh, but it's kind of like I don't see how them singing the national anthem and letting them finish kills anything. It's probably a great YouTube viral moment, you know, for some patriotism for once for this country uh, versus the YouTube viral moment of shutting them down. Well, and I guess that they're saying it would be if it's offensive to people who don't agree with what their country stands uh, for. At that point, don't be at the Capitol. You know, like, yeah, I don't, I don't I, understand I'm that. I'm so confused. Yeah, I don't understand that. And so uh, it turns out, though, that they did have permission. So there was a miscommunication. They had permission from the Speaker of the House. Oh. Uh, yeah, so not just a nobody. Uh, you know, they had uh, Kevin McCarthy, and he tweeted, just learned that kids were interrupted while singing our national anthem at the Capitol. Unacceptable. 
These children were welcomed by my office because your Capitol is back. It's open, uh, particularly for school groups. So the Capitol Police initially issued a statement saying they were under the impression that the group did not have permission to perform. They later issued a second statement saying that there had been a miscommunication and that police were not aware of the speaker's uh, approval of their performance. We apologize uh, to the choir for the miscommunication that impacted their beautiful rendition Aww. of the Star Spangled exactly. Banner. <laughs> I like that at the end they're like, and it was amazing. <laughs> if we were on The Voice, we would have all turned our chairs for you, but we were just doing our jobs, you know. So, yeah, I'd, I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess you can't make exceptions. I guess if the rule is nobody can sing because you could sing offensive things, and you know, yeah. I, I get it. But again, like you. <laughs> The letter of the law, spirit of the law kind of thing. You're listening to these kids and you're hearing them sing the actual words of the Star Spangled Banner. Right. You're, you're pretty good. Like, yep. it's not going to offend anybody. Ugh. And anybody that does get offended by that, again, like, uh, you know, there are other options for you. And in we're this offended world. by you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. And Are You Kidding Me is a segment I love to do because it's just talking to kids about stuff. Kids are the most honest, and uh, and I just love what you have to say. So if you're a kid, this is your moment. You can uh, weigh in because we talk to a lot of adults on the show. This is just for you, okay? If you need to get your parents' permission first, please do that. I want you to get in trouble. Uh, but I had come across this thing on TikTok uh, that was things that kids don't understand about adulting okay and being an adult like taxes this one kid's like i can't even do math well i mean even as an adult you're still not gonna get it (laughs) i'm one to speak i I still don't understand yeah there's the tip for you it never gets easier uh kids like you know they they don't understand how uh, adults like vegetables and i get it i don't even understand true you still don't eat i still don't i I made it through a whole conference that we were at and didn't have a single vegetable (laughs) I will say, uh, as I've gotten older, my palate, my taste buds definitely grew with me. And Mm. I like more vegetables than I did back when I was a kid. Okay, so if you were a kid, what is something that you just don't get that adults do? Okay, like, (laughs) makes no sense to me. 855-33-WAY-FM is the number, so put your thinking caps on and figure out the answer to that question. It's the easiest test you'll take uh, right now. So 855-33-WAY-FM. What is it that parents do or adults do that you just don't get? We'll take yours right now for Are You Kidding Me? Let's go. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Uplifting Way FM. This is The Wally Show. Bree, thank you for joining us for Are You Kidding Me? Where we just talk to kids about stuff. Uh, first off, how old are you? I am 11. I'm almost 12. Okay, so here's what the question is. What is something that you as a kid don't get that adults do? I don't get whenever... Adults do taxes that there's a certain number of like days that they get, and they always stress out in those few days. Like they are so stressed. So you're saying that you think adults are waiting to the very last minute when they should be more responsible. Yeah. And Bree, I'm yeah. sure you've been in that situation where it's like you've needed to write a paper or you've needed to study for a test, but you keep putting it off, putting it off because it's something you don't want to do. Well, that's the same for adults with taxes. Ah. Yeah, so let me just tell you this. Let me give you a hint. As an adult who does taxes and hates doing them every year, uh, the time to bring this up is not right before April 15th. If you want to bring it up in January, hey, Mom, Dad, you know, why don't you get a head start on your taxes early this year? You always tell me to get my homework done early. That's acceptable. Any time from April 1st on, just leave them alone and let them do their thing. It won't go well for you. So hopefully that will uh, help clear this up for you a little bit, Bree. Okay, thank you guys so much. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Uplifting Way FM, this is The Wally Show. Cadence, thank you for joining us for Are You Kidding Me? Now, how old are you? I'm 11. 11 years old. Okay, now here's the question. What is something that you as a kid don't get about adults? This was something that was on TikTok, and one of them was great. It's like, why do adults like coffee? Because this, <laughs> like, this is the worst tasting stuff ever. Why would you drink this? Uh, so that's one example. What would your example be, Cadence? Why they have to have a job. Why do adults have to have a job? I can tell you in one word. Cadence. (laughs) Yeah, like the reason that your parents are able to pay for all the things you need is because they have a job. 
I also still had one too. Why do adults have so much money, but they don't pay for what they want? Oh, that is a good uh, example, too, Eva. How old are you? Nine. Nine? Okay, I can answer that with one word as well. Eva. <laughs> you know, we, we, we can't spend on the things we want because we have kids, and we love you to death, but you guys are little uh, monetary vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because Eva and Cadence, you both take up your parents' money. They would like to buy something for themselves, but then you two need something, and so they're like, well, we'd rather give it for our kids instead of for ourselves. Probably. Yeah, here's a test for you, Eva. Would you ever give up all of your birthday presents uh, one year so that your mom and dad could go do something they wanted to do? Yes. You would? Oh, you were the best kid ever. Man alive. My kid would have answered no. My kid still would answer no, and she's 24. (laughs) Well, Candace and Eva, you guys are amazing. We love having you on the show uh, for Are You Kidding Me? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, electronic. Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. If you ever want to get a hold of me, Wally at WayFM.com is how you can do that. And I love when people give us updates to things. Uh, remember when we did the uh, name it and claim it for the girl who had the new succulent plant, the 11 year old girl? Oh, yeah. Remember that? And you uh, took a crack at it, Gavin. Yeah, we both went down the, uh, what are we? Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she said her mom hit me up. Hey, thank you guys so much. She loved listening to you guys come up with names. She was laughing and smiling the entire time. She actually ended up choosing, wait for it, oh, wait for oh. it, Gavin's name. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she does want to get another one, so she will name that one uh, Gladys Gillyweed. So she'll oh. go with mine for the second. But you won, Gavin. She chose yours. That's so sweet. So. Very nice. So and you, then, you don't always have the best names. No, huh. but my, this one was. But then, <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, Second best. I'm not bitter. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, kind of some vindication for me, though. Hey, Wally, uh, this is from Teresa, one of our potties, which, by the way, you can be a potty. You just have to listen to our podcast for free and uh, get in that way. And all you have to do is text TWS. Uh, or, no, text potty Thank to you. 91979. Thank you. I got that wrong. Yeah, potty. Wait, did you say podcast? Yeah. Oh, they no, can, they come can, on, you're the you digital can, girl. Here's the thing, it's you TWS. Can, I apologize. Yes. It's I TWS. It. TWS, which stands for The Wally Show. Yes. TWS to nine yes. nine seven. <laughs> Once again, I have been vindicated. Oh, and so that's what this is all about. Subject, Junior Mints. Because I contend oh, that Junior that. Mints melt when oh. you take them out of the box. My wife don't. would put them in a bag no. and they would we melt. Don't. They would, and like Nobody before the movie cares. even started. Nope, you that's not so true. Passionate that's about so passionate about this. So not true. Hey, Wally. From Teresa, a loyal potty. I can 100% confirm that Junior Mint starts to melt as soon as you open the box. I like to keep a box at my desk. I try to ration them over the week. Okay, a day, all right. Uh, But uh, they melt and instantly become a sticky mess in the box. So there you go. She said she's even tried taping the end of the box shut. Says it buys her a day, maybe two. That's ridiculous. It's very true. It's very true. Then move away from the equator, obviously. Stop eating junior no. No. Yeah. I, no, I don't want to live in that world. Uh, so there you go. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for vindicating me and proving uh, to Betty Rock and Gavin that I am always you, right. You've proved no. nothing. If you ever want, I was right about the uh, TWS thing. So uh, if you ever want <laughs> to email thing. me, just Wally at wayfm.com. And who knows, your email might make the air. Uplifting Way FM. He's wise beyond his years. I can't really tell, but it seems like he's very good. Here's Gavin. Would you guys agree that every generation tends to get confused by, like, the trends of the group that's younger than them? Like, you guys are, I feel like, both baffled by my generation and how we handle this world. Mm, Yes, Yes. absolutely. How you think about (laughs) it, how you approach it, everything you do and say and believe. Yes. And because I've been with you guys long enough, I do think that I've tended to to also agree. Yeah, we're making you better. We are, we might make this world go Sideways, yeah. Someday, absolutely. I'm very concerned about the future. <laughs> but I did find this list is a few things that older people are saying baffle them about teens and twenty somethings nowadays. And I think you guys will wholeheartedly agree about everything that I say here. Okay. So the first one was public TikTok dancing. Mm. Uh, yeah. Do you guys see? Like, do you guys ever see people actually doing that? 
Uh, I've I've seen one person doing it and like trying to make a TikTok, uh-huh. and I so mm-hmm. badly wanted to ruin it for him, but I did not. <laughs> oh, I, have, I, I resisted. I'm like, let I, them do them. I just get secondhand embarrassed. Yes, because yeah. it's like, are you going to regret that later? Yeah. And I, I now, just it don't I don't like it. All of that said, the reason I don't like it is because I'm super jealous. Yeah, <laughs> like if I could do a TikTok dance and I was good at it, I would do it all the time. But he can't even reach his own shoes. I cannot. <laughs> I can't touch my toes. I can't do nothing. I have no rhythm. It's horrible. So I, I have just sworn off of it. So I don't understand it. I wish I did. Okay. Me too. I'm with you too. Uh, the next one was filming themselves crying. Oh, that makes no sense. I feel like I'll be going through, again, TikTok, yeah. and I will see just those videos where somebody's gone through something they say is quote unquote traumatic. And yeah, they like just, their Starbucks order was wrong. Yeah, and they feel that need <laughs> to they wait whip a minute. it out. Uh, wait a minute. What? Maybe Gen Zers will film themselves crying, but I think boomers or Gen Xers like you, Wally, yeah. will film yourselves getting angry. Yes. So it's pretty much the same thing. You know, in, in a weird world it is, just one is slightly worse and the, the crying. <laughs> no, no, no. The uh-huh. anger makes sense. <laughs> okay, and then the last one was Extravagant baby showers. Oh yes, <laughs> I feel like that's. Yeah. I feel like those have. They've always been the parties. Like baby showers have always yes. been a big event for people. But these days, it has to be something that has like an Instagram backdrop yes. to it. It has to have it has a to have bunch a of things. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and then gender reveals. I don't get those all are that. Weird. Like promposals are getting a little crazy too. Yeah, when I was younger, when we had our daughter, I was thirty when we had our daughter, and we did. The first, like for me, uh, couples shower. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a smidge weird. Uh, my daughter or my wife did other ones like with her friends and that all made sense. And so this was kind of before it became normal, you know, and it, and, and I will say this. I didn't hate it because it really was just sure. a party with our friends. And so it was but that was all it was. And we opened presents and stuff and everybody shares your joy like that was it was good for that. Um, but they have gotten like super uh-huh. elaborate. I will say that like when my wife and I choose to have a kid, she my, my wife mentioned that since we have family and, you know, New Mexico and Louisiana, she's like, we could have like two baby showers yeah. and throw two different parties. And my brain's just saying, oh, just let's have one. Anyone who wants to come can come to it. And yeah. I don't want it to be this massive ordeal. And here's what I love about Gavin. Gavin understands me. And so Gavin knows I'm not going to be there, but I will send a really <laughs> oh. nice gift. <laughs> oh, thank you. you. Know? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. I was talking with my daughter. I got to see her over the weekend, and we were talking about, like, fears and stuff. And my wife rode a roller coaster that my daughter talked her into that she will never ride again. So she did it one time, is never doing it again. Still a little upset with my daughter. Uh, <laughs> like, because she was scared. And I'm like, man, I love so many experiences. I'm trying to think of things that I'm actually scared of besides success and failure. <laughs> um, like, but I'm not scared of, like, doing things. I, I like to try different yeah, things. Yeah, and there are definite things that you should be afraid of trying, like that time that you thought it was a good idea to take your bicycle and go down two flights of stairs. I killed it, though. Well, and you also got a, a stick through your nose while you tried to motorcycle yep. for the first time. You have had a lot time. more near-death experiences than most. I think so, yeah, but that's because I like to kind of do things. I like to live out there, you know? Mm. Uh, but what I want to talk about is what is that one thing that you tried and you'll never try again? Like Gavin mentions the stick up my nose. A very weird, random dirt bike accident, but it didn't stop me. I went right back, and uh-huh. like I conquered it, you know? <laughs> and so, what is that thing that you've done once that you'll never do again? Like, I skydived, and I went more than once, you know? And so... I don't know that I would do it again because I've already tempted fate like twice. And so now I'm like, now you're just asking to be a target for God. Uh, And so I don't know that I would skydive again. I've already done it, you know. Mm -hmm. So what is that thing for you? Gavin, do you have anything that you would not do again that you've done? Um... I think that I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't ride a horse again. Oh, I uh, I remember the last time, like when I was young, like I loved horses yeah. growing up for some reason. Yeah, My and Little then, Pony. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> stop it. No, but I remember, but we were at like a fair, and I saw the horse 
uh, like kick another horse. Yeah. And in my head, I'm like, well, if that was me right behind that, I've heard stories of people getting smacked by those things. Sure. So I, I just don't want to be near a horse ever again. All right. So what is that thing that you did try? You did it, but you are never doing it again. And why? 855-33-WAY-FM. That's 855-33-WAY-FM. We'd love to hear your story now. So what is that thing for you, Janice? I bought the t-shirts a few more times than I should have probably, but I'm a Texas girl. We used to ride oil pumps. Ride oil pumps? Those things you see with like the back half of it spinning in a circle? You guys used to ride those? The ones where they would pump up and down, and we would climb up in them and scoot onto the end and ride them like a horse. Was that allowed? No, probably not. No, that's uh, got to be all private. There had to be a lot of no trespassing signs because that's so wow. easy to get hurt. Yes, it was not the smartest things we ever did, but it was a Texas thing, and it was a kid thing. We did tend to do that, and it was one of those things when you do it once or twice, you kind of know you shouldn't do it anymore. Yeah, like, and if your kid ever came to you and went, hey, Mom, uh, there's this new TikTok I trend. It's called them. riding, uh, like, oil <laughs> pumps. I think I'm going to go do this. You most definitely would be like, no, you're not. <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, most definitely would say, no, not going to happen. It's a miracle most of us live to have kids, honestly. <laughs> oh, my goodness, is that not the truth? I have four, a grown adult, and I am thanking Jesus every day that they survived, and we all survived. Well, Janice, thanks for being on the show with us today. We really appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. We love y'all. Teresa said that swimming with dolphins, she said, I will never do that again. She It scared her for holding on and having them haul me around through deep water. Nope, never again. And I would get that, too. Like, I, I don't like to know, not know what's underneath me. Yeah. It just freaks me out. My so. daughter did this, and she held on to the thing. She was 13, held on to the dolphin that swam around and brought her back. And she's like, that was amazing. I lost my swimsuit. That was amazing. <laughs> Fortunately, she caught it at her ankles. Uh, <laughs> So, Marin, what is that thing that you swear you're never going to do again? Pin the clothespin to my uh, uvula, the back part of your mouth, that thing that hangs down in your mouth. What? How do you even <laughs> do that? Like, like I would gag so badly. And, like, the, the aim that you would have to have. Yeah, I was dared by my mom to do it. I, I asked her if she'd pay me $5 to do it when I was in high school, and I just went through the dare, and it hurt for days. I do not recommend it. Does your mom still dare you to do things? <laughs> no. Well, I think she was a surprise. I actually followed through with it, and she did pay me the $5, but it really wasn't worth it. And no, she does it. I'm grown now. I do it to my kids. <laughs> oh, there you go. At least it's good you're passing that down. Absolutely. Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show. And uh, from time to time, we like to do the scoop to help you out. And Betty Rock is our resident scooper with things that are uh, beneficial to your life. And I always love a scoop when she gives me something. She's handed uh, Gavin and I a piece of paper uh, mm-hmm. for your scoop. So, what do you have the scoop on today? Well, I have the scoop on how to curb those late night cravings. Oh, uh, I am excited to learn this because I have. Uh, been crave- I've been giving into those cravings. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Well, let's say you're craving a family-sized bag of M&Ms. Oh. Instead of heading to the kitchen to grab them or to go to your nightstand, if you're Wally, look at photos <laughs> of M&Ms. Oh. Supposedly, looking at photos of the snacks we crave will make us not long for no, it anymore. That's not going to happen. I don't... So what I've done is I've printed off a picture okay. of some, a bowl of M&Ms. Okay. And I want you each to look at those and okay. see if it helps with those chocolate cravings. Because I am like hungry right now. I'm I am eating too, actually. Peanuts, and it just isn't the same. Yeah, I mean, I I can't. <laughs> I'm licking lick, the paper. I lick yeah. the paper, and, and and it doesn't it doesn't give me that oh, satisfaction. I can taste the blue M&M. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, I mm, I'm I don't know, like. I I'm think, still hungry. I think it just makes me want them more. Yeah. Seeing the picture really? and not being able to eat them. Because yeah. I would I would reach into this bowl and I'd have 20. Bowls. <laughs> well, if you find yourself the next time craving something, maybe on your you know work break <laughs> yeah. or late at night, and you're like, I know I shouldn't have that. It's, Look at pictures of it instead. It's kind of working for me. You get that satisfaction of, oh, that would be good. And then it's almost like you ate it. I think one step better is a picture of me eating a bowl. <laughs> of M&M's and then seeing myself and how I look, that's going to be the deterrent. I see. (laughs) 
I'll never forget taking my first compassion trip, and we went to Ghana, Africa. When we got there to the site, there was this little girl. She was six years old. I later found out her name was Vivian, and she would not let go of my hand. She followed me everywhere I went on that site. And later, I got to uh, meet her family. I met her mother and her siblings, and they all lived in this little mud hut. I mean, it wasn't big at all. And when I looked at Vivian, she had the biggest smile on her face face. And she was just happy to be there, just happy to be with us. And it made such an impact in my life that I wanted to sponsor her right then and there. (laughs) Because of my sponsorship for Vivian through Compassion, I'm able to write letters back and forth with her. I'm now getting updated photos. And now I think she's even taller than me, which is crazy to think. But I'm also able to see how my sponsorship is providing the food, clean water, and other support that she needs and her family needs to live the best life possible. And I can only imagine now with the pandemic, war and weather disasters, there are so many other families like Vivian's who are dealing with hunger. So maybe you want to make an impact and sponsor your own Vivian. Just click the compassion banner when you go to wayfm.com. Uplifting Way FM. If it's trending, streaming or starring, Betty Rock's got it. Betty Rock's got it. On the Rock Report. Hey Betty. While many Hollywood actors would be thrilled to be starring in a hit film set to play in IMAX theaters for only a week, that's not good enough for the Tom Cruise. Oh, really? Because if I can only imagine uh, that I starred in was in IMAX, you did not like star. for even an hour, I would be so happy. <laughs> His new movie, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part Oof. 1. The part one. Come I love that. No, 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 no. I love the that. The more the barrier. They're already telling me that there's a part two, so I have a reason to live. It's okay. Ridiculous. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> well, it about comes that. out July 12th, and it will play in most IMAX theaters. But after that week, it'll be kicked out by another hit movie set to release the week after. Did they say what hit movie it is? Christopher Nolan's Open Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, oh, which is going to be yeah. a really, really good movie. At one point, I had heard a rumor that IMAX theaters were going to be taken up by the Barbie movie oh. coming out this year, <laughs> then if I would be, it would be justifiable to be sure. upset about that. But Oppenheimer looks like a good it movie does. too, so okay. Well, when Cruz heard about that his Mission Impossible movie was only going to be in IMAX for a week. Oh no. He was fit to be tied, and he let everyone (laughs) know it, too. One source claims he's been, quote, complaining loudly about it to Paramount uh, executives and has been fiercely showing the film to exhibitors, hoping to convince them to switch their plans. Oh, okay. So maybe he would like to have it switched where the Christopher Nolan's movie comes out first and then... Mission Impossible comes out second. No, I think he just wants Christopher Nolan's movie to go away. Yeah. Like I think, like he's That's impossible. He's not going to let it come I mean, out wait, first. That is a it's mission. It's a Mission hey. Impossible. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Rock. <laughs> Uplifting Way FM. This is the Wally Show, and Betty Rock is always reminding me. It's not what you said; it's how you said it. You know, so you got to be careful with your words and how you say things. I'm like, yeah, that's good advice uh, that I will uh, listen to one day. <laughs> and uh, no, but I, I got a text from a company that was a very interesting way to approach a situation okay it's my cell phone company Mm -hmm. and i got this text from them uh says hey we understand running a business can keep you busy please don't forget to pay your bill uh because i have a i have a business account with the verizon and um they had had a problem where they stopped my auto pay for some reason. wasn't on me, so I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But I just the way that they came at it versus, you know, you need to pay us now or we're sending your things to a collection company. Mm-hmm. You know, they were like, hey, we know it's tough. We, we, we don't want to bother you. We know you got a lot going on. Uh, if it's not too much trouble. Somewhere mm-hmm. in the near future, yeah. at some point in time when you're uh, freed up uh, in between meetings and being successful, would you mind paying us. And I'm like, that was a really good way to handle that. Well, because it's not just like automatically assuming the worst in you. Right, exactly. It's not judgmental. Right, and it turns out, I mean, it wasn't even my fault, you Mm -hmm. know, and so uh, but it was good because that one got my attention because I look at so many texts that you get anymore and you just blow it off. 
Uh, and it got my attention. I was able to figure out the problem. <laughs> um, but I thought, oh, that was a good way or a creative way to remind me to do something. And so that's what I want to discuss. Like maybe your mom when you were a kid had a creative way to remind you to do something. Maybe your wife has creative ways to remind you to do things that you've said you've done <laughs> or will do and haven't done. Like a sticker will board. <laughs> yeah, it's like Betty Rock has a sticker board for us here. And Gavin and I are uh, craving the stickers. Uh, but it's working. We're becoming better men because of her. <laughs> so 855-33-WAY-FM. That's 855-33-WAY-FM. What is a creative way that somebody reminded you to do something that didn't feel off-putting? You know, and you're like, oh, you know what? I am going to do that. 855-33-WAY-FM. I'd love to hear your story now. So has anybody ever been creative in reminding you to do something, Joanna? It wasn't completely a reminder, but, like, my mom, when I was a kid, if we didn't have the money, she'd be like, we don't have the money, honey. And it just made it like, oh, okay. But, like, if she would have said no, I would have not been happy. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, because then you had at least an explanation. It was just a better way of saying things. Yeah, and as a kid, you can kind of understand being broke. You know, you're like, oh, I get that. I don't have any money in my piggy bank either. That makes sense. The other thing also, really quick, it's nice that they didn't do, like, a, a threatening yes. email also or whatever. Because yeah. then there's so much spam out there doing that right now. So you think, oh, well. That's just spam. That's exactly you know? it. Yeah, that's exactly it because it got my attention and I thought, okay, it's not a scam email. And and so I got this problem taken care of, which again was not on my end, but uh, right. still could have been a problem. Yeah, that's good they did it that way. Uplifting Way FM, this is the Wally Show. And when you hear people write things like, I'm struggling with depression and anxiety, and I'm isolating myself, I don't really want to be around anyone, you feel for that person. Because that strategy is probably your worst strategy, you it, know? Yeah, it is. I I'm, I mean, I've, I've understood what that feels like because you don't want to be a burden to anyone that you love and you feel like you are being a burden, so you kind of isolate yourself because you're not... You don't want to answer those questions and you don't feel like you're the person that you need to be. And yeah. so it's easier just to isolate yourself. But in reality, it's harder. Yeah, because then that makes it like this downward spiral, mm-hmm. too, that you can't get out of. It's mm-hmm. kind of like when people, you know, myself included, have sin in your life, you know, and you don't go to Jesus, you run from him, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the worst direction to go because you're getting farther and farther away from the person that can help you. And it's mm-hmm. the same thing with depression and anxiety. You get further and further away from people that love you and want to help you and i do love the fact though that cindy put this on our prayer wall at least so maybe she has people that she's pulling back from in her life and and understandable but she's still trying to deal with this and so she's on the prayer wall at wayfm.com asking for other people to pray for and this is what i love that even though she's separating herself from people she's going to get notifications as people pray for her that'll pop up on her phone and it'll be like hey someone just pray for you hey someone just pray for you someone just pray for you and it's just great reminders throughout the day that even though she might want to be alone she still reached out and then people are reaching in Mm -hmm. to her as well and that's the way the prayer wall works it's fantastic Mm -hmm. and it's easy to do that if you want to pray for her or you want to pray for i mean there's a lot of requests on there but you just text the word pray to 91979 and we'll send you that link and it'll take you straight to the prayer wall yeah take your pick it's kind of like going to a smorgasbord you're like i'll have a little depression some anxiety (laughs) a divorce i'll have that you know some yeah it does i mean like things that you resonate with definitely because we all have experiences that are kind of similar um and it's something that you might be uniquely qualified for because of some of your past issues to pray for somebody because you know exactly what they are feeling and what they need in that moment and you can better pray for them than maybe someone that hasn't dealt with that so bring it all to the prayer wall at wayfm.com i almost get the phone number <laughs> pray <laughs> yeah. to 91979 and now for some good news Uplifting Way FM, this year's Wally Show with a cavalcade, a roundup of good news stories because the regular news can be a bit of a bummer. So with that, we're going to start off with you. Betty Rock, what you got? Rosie, she just celebrated her 32nd birthday. And if you're like, well, what's the big deal about that? Well, she's the world's oldest living cat. Nice. Oh my, she's How older than me. At 32 <laughs> what years What in the old. world? Oh, yes. Okay, so her name is Rosie, and her owner is still waiting for Guinness to certify hmm. it, but the current record holder is only 27 years wow. old. Wow. But here's here's the craziest part. The record for the oldest cat ever 
still belongs to a cat from Texas named Cream Puff, who died at 38. <laughs> that's crazy. That's 38 like years too long. Old. Yeah, that's one where you've got that cat for a long time. You're like, are you going to today? Maybe. Like, but you're saying that, that for 18 years. Yeah. Are you saying that about your own cat, Sasha? Oh, getting there. <laughs> She's like, what, 16? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, Gavin, could we, this is good news. I got to remember that. Good news, giddy up. Gavin, go. There was a dad in Tennessee is going viral after he abandoned his dream. Redlocks and shaved his head to support his 11 year old nice. daughter who's fighting cancer. He, he hadn't cut his hair for nine years. So nice. that was a lot wow. of work on his end. And to give that up I, it makes a lot of sense. And it's pretty awesome. I hate to see that for little kids. Yeah. For anyone going through cancer, it's hard, but it's really hard for little kids. And so, you know, to see a dad step up like that, mm-hmm. good stuff. Uh, speaking of stepping up, there were some cops who, there was a guy on the Staten Island ferry uh, who uh, was about to jump off. And they saw this, and he was going to jump off in the middle of the harbor. He's obviously despondent. And they walked up behind him. They're talking to him. And they ended up uh, calling some other people in, and some boats come in to help. And then one cop ends up grabbing him and pulling him back through the window before Mm. he can take his own life. And it was just a really sobering reminder to me. Uh, and I know we're in good news, you know, but it's a sobering reminder to me of how much people do need good news and more specifically the good news, the gospel, as, you know, they find themselves being in places where they're hopeless, you mm-hmm. know. And that's one of the things we try to do here every day is provide that hope for people in some form, you know, whether it's a laugh or a song or, you know, a spiritual conversation or what have you, is we try to provide hope. And that's why I'm so thankful uh, for the people that support the ministry of Way FM faithfully throughout the year because you you keep that hope coming along with the good news giddy up. Well, that's the end, but it doesn't have to be. Check out our aftercast. It's new stuff you didn't hear in the podcast. Be sure to rate us on iTunes as well as connect with us on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Just search Wally Show. And if you'd like to join our Facebook group made exclusively for you potties, the link is in the description of this podcast. Thanks to Colorado Christian University Online and United Faith Mortgage for supporting what we do. 